All right, so now that we've talked about three-dimensional space, um, I need to talk about coordinate systems. Coordinate systems. There's three different systems that we're going to talk about, and one of these is kind of review. Uh, polar coordinates. Now, polar coordinates describe it's a way to rewrite an xy point with r's and thetas. So polar coordinates is a coordinate system for a two-dimensional uh, space. So where x could be written as r cosine of theta and y could be written as r sine of theta. And these come from some point that normally we could just say, we could find this point by going over x and up or down y, but instead of doing that, we're going to go a certain distance from the origin and a certain angle from the positive x-axis. Theta is always from that positive x-axis. All right, so some other kind of information about polar coordinates, useful information. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Um, we can use this equation a lot to find, uh, find out what the radius is if we know x and y. Um, and in order to find theta, if we know x and y, we would have to take y, divide it by x, and then take the arctangent of that. All of these things come from the similar, from the triangle formed with legs x and y, hypotenuse being the radius, and that angle theta in there from the positive x-axis. So all four of these different components all come from this triangle. Okay, so now that's polar coordinates. Now, if we want to up polar coordinates a dimension, so we're upping polar coordinates a full dimension, um, this is called cylindrical coordinates. Oops. Cylindrical coordinates. And so basically what cylindrical coordinates do is that in a way they say, all right, we have this circle in the cylinder and the circle it can be we can use those same x's and the same y to define a circle, but in cylindrical, if you're gonna make it a cylinder, it's gotta have a third dimension to it. Um, and in this case, we actually, in cylindrical coordinates, we just say z is equal to z. We're giving height to a circle. So similarly, as before, we've got that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and then we've got that the tangent of theta is equal to y over x, so if we were to find theta. So on our x, y plane, most everything is the same. We can define a radius and a certain theta, so this would be a certain radius, and this would be where theta is from zero to two pi. It's a full it's a theta right there. It's a it's a full circle. But what's different about cylindrical coordinates is this z. We're gonna say we're defining a cylinder because we're saying, well, let z be anything. Z is zero. It's one. It's two. It's three. It's it's everything. Um, in this cylinder and every time you get a different value of z, so here's zero, here's one, every time you get a different value of c, you're sort of creating a new circle to create that entire cylinder. Okay, so that's cylindrical coordinates. So one thing before I move on, I just want to mention cylindrical coordinates and polar coordinates are very, very similar. R is the same. R is the radius from the origin in the xy plane, a distance in the xy plane. Theta is the same. Theta is the angle from the positive x axis over. 
So R and theta in cylindrical coordinates and polar coordinates are exactly the same. Cylindrical coordinates just adds a Z. This is different in spherical coordinates. SPH. In spherical coordinates, um, let me first, I'll just give you the equations and then I'm gonna describe it all. So in spherical coordinates, x is equal to r sine of phi cosine theta. y is equal to, I think I just said r, that is a rho, it is called rho, it's a Greek letter. Um, sine of phi sine of theta. And z is equal to rho cosine phi. Um, and another useful thing in spherical coordinates or useful equation is that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is always equal to rho squared. So rho in this case, it's a radius, but it's a radius from 0, 0, 0, three-dimensional radius um, outwards. So R in the other coordinate systems was only on the xy plane. In spherical coordinates, rho is everywhere. Okay, so here's x, here's y, and here's z. So normally, normally we come we go, we start at the origin, we come out some distance x, we go over some distance y, and then we go up some distance z. And that gives us a point, an x, y, z point in three dimensions. What's different here in spherical coordinates is that we have this rho. Now rho is the distance from the origin to the point we're looking for, if, it's, if we're just describing a point. So that's rho. Now phi is the angle, I'm sorry, let me go to theta, because theta is always the angle from the positive x-axis, so it would be the angle from the positive x-axis over to right beneath the point, so probably like right there. That is theta. Now rho is very different. Rho starts from the positive z axis, always. So rho would go from the positive z axis. I keep mixing up and saying different variables, and I'm sure this is very confusing, I'm sorry. Phi. So phi is from the positive z-axis. Theta is from the positive x-axis. I should also clarify that theta can make a full circle. It can make a full circle all the way around. And because it makes a full circle, it's not necessary for phi to make a full circle. Phi only a half circle. Because if I want to reach a point that is say, I don't know, way down here in negative z, I'm still gonna move over that same, I'm still gonna use that theta right there, move over that same theta. But now my rho, my phi is going to start from the positive z-axis and then go all the way down that direction. Now, if we had a point that was over here, let me see if I can get enough colors going on here. All right, so if we have a point that's over here, now that is below the z-axis, negative y, positive x. And so let's just say we have a point there. The theta would now, remember it starts from the positive x-axis, 
it would go all the way around over here. Phi starts from the positive Z and goes down, kind of like an umbrella. So there's phi and then theta would make it so that we would hit that negative y value and the positive x. All right, this coordinate system is a little bit, we'll, we'll cover this again and kind of go over this one again at some point.